Hi everyone, happy Sunday. I'm Sister Mary Elizabeth from the Saints of the Word community, and I would like to welcome all of you that are joining us this Sunday, the fourth Sunday in Ordinary Time, today, January 31st. And for the liturgy of this fourth Sunday, we will be reading Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 15 to 20. Responsorial Psalm is Psalm 95. Second reading on this Sunday is from the 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 32 to 35. And the Gospel is Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 1, verses 21 to 28. So we can start the reading of the Word of God for today. Moses spoke to the people. He said, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own kin. You shall heed such a prophet. This is what you request, requested of the Lord, your God at Horeb, on the day of the assembly, when you said, Let me not hear the voice of the Lord my God any more, or over again see his great fire, lest I die. Then the Lord replied to me, They are right in what they have said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their own kin. I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them everything that I commanded him. Anyone who does not heed the words that he shall speak in my name, I myself will hold him accountable. But any prophet who speaks in the name of other gods and who presumes to speak in my name a word that I have not commanded him to speak, the prophet shall die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In this first reading today, we see a promise that the Lord gives to the people of Israel. Moses said, the Lord will raise up for you a prophet like me, because you asked. But here is interesting if we see the life of the Israelites. The Israelites, many times, they wanted to be like other nations, other people. Having kings, prophets, like other people. They never really quite accepted how they were special, how they were different. And they asked to have a prophet. And the Lord says, okay. I would give you a prophet, a prophet after Moses. But listen, you have to listen to him. Every word that he says is a word that comes from me. Don't listen to other prophets or even prophets that presumes they are speaking my word. And in this Lexia Divina today, we can ask ourselves, what does it mean to me, Lord, today? How can I apply my life today? Am I listening to the prophets that the Lord put in my life? First, am I listening to the church, our mother, the church? Am I listening to the word of God? Am I listening to the people that are prophets in my life? And how can we recognize that they are prophets? Is because they help us to understand the will of God. They are with us all the time. Are not people that are trying to presume that they know things, but there are people that help us to see the will of God in our life. And you can think now, who is this person to you? That is always there trying to help you to understand the presence of God there. The responsorial psalm, Psalm 95, says, O oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. O oh, that today you would listen to his voice. Do not harden your hearts as at Meribah, as on the day at Massa in the wilderness, 
when your ancestors tested me and put me to the proof, though they had seen my works. So this psalm today talks about the same thing. The people of Israel under the rule of Moses. And the people of Israel, they hardened their hearts. They did not want to listen to the Lord. So you can make a journey through the through Old Testament and you see how difficult it was for Moses to guide God's people to the promised land. And here it is an exclamation of the psalmist, but we can say of God's heart saying, Oh, that today you would listen to his voice. Oh, that today you would listen to my voice, God speaking to you. Do not harden your hearts, but trust me, believe me, be with me. Second reading today is from the first letter of Corinthians chapter 7, verses 32 to 35. I want you to be free of anxieties. The unmarried man is anxious about the affairs of the Lord, how to please the Lord. But the married man is anxious about the affairs of the world, how to please his wife and his interests are divided. The unmarried woman and the virgin are concerned about the affairs of the Lord, so that they may be holy in body and spirit. But the married woman is concerned about the affairs of the world, how to please her husband. I say this for you on benefit. Do not put any restraint upon you, but to promote good order and unhindering devotion to the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This chapter 7 of First Corinthians is very interesting. What we see in the whole chapter is St. Paul is trying to explain why he was single and what are the benefits of being single. Here he's not saying anything against marriage. Marriage is sacred. Marriage is a sacrament. So it's sacred. But Paul here is explaining why there are some people that are not married. Why there are priests. Why there are consecrated men and women. And singles. That's single people that discern not to marry. Why? Why do they do this? And Paul here says, I want you to be free from anxieties. Paul is trying to explain that when you are a married man or woman, you have your family to take care. You have your, your affairs. You have your things to do. That's normal. And that comes from the vocation that, that you chose. That is married life. You have to take care of your husband or wife. Kids, you have to work. You have to provide for your family. That's normal. There is nothing wrong with it. But that's for the person who has the right vocation to it. But he says, the unmarried man or woman are dedicated to the Lord. He, this man or, or, or woman or women is anxious about the affairs of the Lord. Paul says, I want you to be free of anxieties. But this person will be anxious for the Lord. Saying, the good anxiety and what it means by anxiety is this person will be full of energy to serve the Lord. That's why there are people that are called from the Lord. They are called by the Lord to serve Him in His church, to be missionaries, to spread the word of God and to, to be free from all earthly things to serve the Lord. Again, Married life is not wrong, it's beautiful. It's the most beautiful vocation on earth. But priesthood and religious life are not for this earth. This vocation is, from he is for heaven. And here on earth, we point out heaven already. Paul is trying to help here a discernment. It will be a discernment word. He's explaining and saying, What is the desire of your heart? Do you desire to serve the Lord? above everything or do you feel that you are called to serve the Lord through marriage that's a discernment and that's what Paul is talking about here Paul is trying to help the community of 
Cor Corinthians to understand that. And it's important for us to understand that too. And to see that the Lord calls many people to different vocations. But all of us, our goal is heaven. Our goal is eternity with our God. The Gospel for today, Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 1, verses 21 to 28 says, The disciples went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority, and not the scribes. Just then, there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit convulsing the man and crying with loud voice came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on, say, on asking one another, What is this, a new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once, Jesus' fame began to spread throughout the surrounding regions of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The unclean spirit, and we can say the demons, they recognized Jesus. They said, what are you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know whom you are, the Holy One of God. This is not a profession of faith. If it were, there wouldn't be demons, there would be angels. No, it wasn't a profession of faith. They were trying to trap Jesus with pride and people in trying to prevent people to really understand whom Jesus was though it seems they are they recognize Jesus who you are you are Jesus of Nazareth the Holy One of God they are not wrong with it but they do not mean it they do not mean it in their hearts because they are unclean spirits and what does Jesus do Again, he says, be silent, come out of him. Jesus has authority over the unclean spirits, but not a crazy authority that needs to be screaming and acting and doing things. Jesus is the word of God. So he said he has authority to say a word and they will be silent. They, the unclean spirits, the demons will obey him because he has authority. And Jesus' authority comes from the Father. He is the one sent by the Father. Again, the unclean spirits said that Jesus was Jesus of Nazareth, the Holy One of God. But they did not, did not say it from, the, from their hearts. They did not mean it. And we need to mean it. When we call the name of Jesus, to mean it, Jesus is the Holy One of God, but He is my Savior. The demons can recognize whom Jesus is, but they can never say that He's a Savior. Because if, Jesus, if they say that Jesus is a Savior, so what are they doing? Jesus is our Savior. Jesus is our Lord. Let's believe in Him. Let's profess it with our life and our words. Not only with our words, but with our daily life. Let's profess that Jesus is our Savior. Let's not do like the people of Israel that asked for, for prophets, asked for kings, and God gave everything to them. It did, they did not obey because they, did, they wanted to be like the pagan nations. Let not harden our hearts on this day to understand that the Lord, God, Jesus, He wants to be the King of our life. And let's ask the Lord, if you don't have discerned your vocation yet, let's ask the Lord to really 
choose what is right for us what he wants from us and if you have if you are in your vocation already ask the lord the grace of every single morning saying yes again to the vocation that was discerned that you chose that the lord blessed you saying yes to it every single day and taking care of the things that the lord is has given you children family a church a mission the lord wants us to serve him all the days of our life but serve him in the right vocation serve him with a heart that trusts in our lord and god amen <music>